Michigan. Michigan. Home to the American truck country. Home to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Last year, Toyota's battling for the top spot. Toyota took the checkered in Michigan. Toyota winner at Michigan International Speedway. What a mark for the Craftsman Truck Series. It's pretty big for Toyota. I'm David Starr, and I drive a Chevy. I'm Ricky Craven, and I drive a Ford. Hey, I'm Jimmy Spencer, and I drive a Dodge Ram truck. I'm Mike Skinner. I drive a Toyota. Toyota will take the checkered again this year. Bring it on. Come on. Michigan is next. Speed Channel's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Free Race Show is presented by Craftsman. And clouds have moved overhead. Isolated showers are possible in the area, so NASCAR has decided let's get this one underway quickly. Temperature just 62 degrees in Michigan today. We look at the four top 10 point standings. Ted Musgrave on top for the last three races. Ricky Craven holding on to second and yet to get his first win in the Craftsman Truck Series. And Jack Sprague, our most recent winner in this series, in 10th. Speed Channel's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series free race show is brought to you by Craftsman, celebrating 10 years tough of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Welcome to Michigan International Speedway for the Paramount Health Insurance 200 on Speed Channel. In celebration of the 10th anniversary of the Truck Series, we present the toughest NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series moments. Made possible by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR. Moment 16 took place right here at the Michigan International Speedway. It was July 31st of last year when Travis Quaffle, driving the number 24 Toyota Tundra, scored the first modern era win in the upper tier of NASCAR for a foreign manufacturer. Toyota, in its first year of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, took just 13 races to break into the winner's circle. Many times prior, Toyota had come close, but it was this day that all the chips fell into place and saw Travis Quaffle put his name forever in the record books as the first driver to win in a Toyota in the upper tier of NASCAR. And let's go trackside. Ray Dunlap's caught up with truck owner and driver of the number 92, Kevin Harvick. Well, a week ago, I put some news on the air about this guy that apparently wasn't quite right. Now, you're not going to drive the two car next year in Cup. You're going to drive the 29, right? Yeah, we're not going anywhere. Uh, myself and Chevrolet and Jim Goodrich are, you know, uh, looking forward to the future. So uh, committed to Richard Childress as long as he wants to keep me around. So uh, we're looking forward to having fun today. Our Jim Goodrich Silverado uh, didn't qualify that great, but it's really good in race trim, so it should be a lot of fun. How long is it going to take you to get to the front? Well, it just all depends on how the holes open up. These things draft so good, and, and uh, you, know, you get such a run that we'll just have to wait and see. I'm just going to follow Hornaday. Well, Kevin Harvick will have to start 24th in today's race, but up front is young Kyle Busch, and he's with Wendy Venerini. On the pole today is Kyle Busch, which makes him the youngest pole sitter in Truck Series history. Kyle, we're looking at today, looking at Charlotte, Dover. Can you make it three in a row? here in Michigan. I don't know. It's going to be tough. These Craftsman Truck Series competitors are always tough, especially here at Michigan, the way the draft works and everything else. It's kind of a crapshoot to see who's going to win. So uh, we'll have to see. You know, the Ditech.com Chevy Silverado truck's doing an awesome. And got to thank Billy Blue Motorsports and Richie Waters for giving me such a great piece. But uh, we'll come out here today and see how well we can do with it. Three other drivers have won three races in a row in the Truck Series. The last time someone did that was Greg Biffle in 2000. And so Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick coming from the Cup Series trying to take away the limelight from the truck drivers. We'll see if it happens today in Michigan. And it's a black top, white lines, has a lot and the warning signs. I want the rush of a hundred miles. words in motorsports here's the president of paramount health insurance jack randolph drivers start your engines engines are fired up 
36 trucks come to life as we're getting ready for our Paramount Health Insurance 200 on Speed Channel. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Allen alongside of a couple familiar faces, but not so much to the truck series, Daryl Waltrip and Larry McReynolds. Now, Daryl, we had 30 trucks break the track record here in Michigan. How come we're so fast in Michigan? You know, I think I've been watching this. I believe it's the tires. Uh, the tires that they've developed for the cup cars uh, with the aero reduction program is a much softer tire than they ran last year. What they've done is they've taken the same tire that the cup tire and put it on the trucks. And it even the same thing applies to the bush cars. It's really speeded up the trucks because this tire is pretty soft for a truck. And the uh, only thing is, Larry, am I going to be able to run a whole stop? There are no free lunches when you have a soft tire. It's going to be a fast race, just like it was a fast qualifying session. Now, we know this is a fairly short race, 100 laps, 200 miles, and it always somewhat comes down to fuel strategy. These teams can run about 40 to 45 laps on fuel, but the concern after practice yesterday, remember, only four sets of tires for the weekend. Can the tires go 40 to 45 laps? You always want to run as far as you can here on the fuel, but the concern is the, the wear on the tires. So new tires here at Michigan means we have 30 trucks breaking the track record, and there's 36 that are getting ready to go out onto the track to start today's race. We'll be back with more from Michigan. And I spend my time with the pedal to the metal. Some people live their lives afraid of getting hurt. But I love the curve. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed Channel is brought to you in part by Craftsman, celebrating 10 years tough of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. By Ford, the official truck of NASCAR. And by Super Chips, power has never been easier. We look at the Craftsman track description for this two mile oval. 18 degrees of banking, which I know when you're out there on the racetrack, Daryl, it does not feel like 18 degrees. It almost feels flat. It does, but this joint is so much fun to race on. Drivers love it here. Lots of room. Go high, go low, go through the middle. Just pick a lane. Larry, you had mentioned during your race analysis a little bit about uh, potentially not being able to make it on a fuel stop because of tires. Well, and you normally you run this way race backwards. You know it's 100 laps. So if you can run 45 laps, if you can get in there at lap 55, you know you can go the distance. But once again, I think the wear is going to be better on the tires today than yesterday because we've had a lot of track activity. But there is some concern about the right side tires wear. Yeah, and inevitably that improves. Tire wear improves. Well, sometimes we think we've got a problem. Turns out not to be. We look at the Super Chip starting grid. Kyle Busch on the pole for the first time in his career in only his 10th start and uh, we got six Toyotas in the top 10 and of course they're the defending champion Toyota is with Travis Quaffle you've got a couple uh, yeah I got right three there. of them right there yeah. together they ought to all be happy they're all the same speed <laughs> 32 32 27 see Ted Musgrave there in row eight that's the fastest Dodge starting pretty deep in this field <laughs> by the way Kenny Schrader's in the 11 truck so uh, we're pretty excited about that Terry Cook coming off some impressive finishes as of recently starts inside of row 10. You see a lot of our, our winners from this year starting deep in the field. You see Jack Sprague, the winner from Texas, starting in row 15. But I'm not totally surprised at that, Daryl, because you know to qualify good here, you have to have that car pretty tight. Where in the race, you don't. Speaking of that young man, uh, Sprague on the pit road with the hood up, so is the 59 of Robert Presley. As you uh, what's going on there, but they seem to have a problem. Two drivers miss the field in this one. Kelly Sutton and Blake Mallory. You know what? Attempting. That's a NASCAR official right there, and I think they're adjusting the fenders on that truck. I think they must have seen something from up here that uh, they didn't necessarily like. Yeah, NASCAR mandates just how wide those front fenders can be. The wider they are, the more front downforce it puts in these trucks. We'll be riding along with a few drivers, one of them being Daryl's driver in the number 11. That's Ken Schrader. He'll start in the eighth position. Federated Auto Parts number 11. Let's see who uh, got a good look there. Here's uh, here's Bill Lester and another one of the Toyotas. And uh, Bill's a man. I'm telling you, he's due to win a race. Starting fifth. 
Speaking of winning races, the man that has won the last two truck races, he's been entered, Kyle Busch, starting on the pole, using a clear shield. No sun here today. I like that. Got a good, uh, got a good view of his eyes there. You can kind of see him cutting around, checking his gauges, working his tires, getting a little heat on. He's getting ready to go, and go he will. Checking that mirror every once in a while, even here under the pace laps. Kyle Busch, first time he sat on the pole, has a chance to win the Craftsman Win from the Pole Award. If he wins today's race from the pole position, he can win $10,000 for this number 15 team. But if he doesn't win the pole today, then another $2,000 is again added to the prize money, and that purse increases by $2,000 until someone wins the award. $50,000 available from Craftsman this year. I mean, obviously, he's a Hendrick driver, and uh, they got DEI power. That's an interesting combination. Ray, what have you found out down there? Well, Rick, those guys in the booth were talking about how wide the racetrack is here, and I agree, you're going to see lots of passing. The record for lead changes is 18 in this race, and we very well may break that today. But it's my belief that if we have two trucks running side by side at the end of this race, it's going to be the guy on the outside that wins this race. The reason, that extra momentum on the outside. Remember, we have a gear rule this year, and there's less RPMs in the engine. If you want to go fast on that last lap, I think you're going to have to be on the high side. Wendy? Thanks, Ray. Today's race at Michigan is a manufacturer's dream with three of them located in Michigan. A win is a little bit more special for the manufacturers. Now, Toyota got their first victory one year ago here at this track. But Chevy? Chevy's never won here at Michigan in our five visits in the truck series. So it will be interesting to see which ma manufacturer picks up a victory today. It's only 200 miles, but a lot of bragging rights. bragging rights are on the line. Wendy, there's no question. You know, every win is special. But I can remember coming here and winning when I was with the Ford camp and having Edsel Ford stand beside me in victory lane having my picture made. That was pretty cool. One of the Toyota representatives made a comment to me yesterday about Chevy trying to load the field to get a win here in this race. Guys like Kyle Busch coming into the race, Kevin Harvick, uh, almost trying to stack the field a little bit if they can. Well, that's just good racing. I mean, you know, if you want to win this race, come with your best, load them up, and break them on. Bill Davis, three trucks in the top five qualifying. As you had mentioned, six Toyotas up front starting this race. Qualified very well. Mike Skinner had the best practice times leading into this. Well, DW, we don't get to do this much in the no, truck baby. series. Baby, reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Here we go. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go truck racing, boy. on point Rick Crawford getting a little loose coming through turns one and two he'll settle into third he did and there's a pretty big traffic jam back in there too remember most of these trucks they're on low air pressure at the start of this race and when that air pressure is really going to build up over the course of a long run I just saw Kyle Busch dump way down to the inside when he went down the back pitch. He trying to take away air from that line behind him. Well, you got it. You draft here. You can get a pretty serious draft off the truck in front of you. If you can break that draft, you might be able to get away from everybody. See Kevin Harvick there in the 92 truck. He talked about the draft there in the pre-race, working the high side, trying to work up through this traffic. Three wide as they go into turn number two, and it. It was the 99 of Ricky Craven that went on the inside of the white line when they went across the start finish line. Kevin Harvick, the man on the move, picked up nine spots in the first lap. But you'll definitely see him go below that line here on the front stretch, but not like Daytona. It's not out of bounds. And you can see right now, I mean, what we're talking about. You can suck up behind a truck in front of you and get a nice pull right into the third turn. That's what I love about these trucks, Daryl. They poke such a big hole in the air and it opens that door for that truck behind it. Out in front now, starting to line up Kyle Busch, Mike Skinner, Rick Crawford, and Johnny Benson. What, Mike Skinner, that five truck starting to reel in Kyle Busch in the 15, and this is a backup truck for Mike Skinner. Now, I was just noticing there, guys, when Mike Skinner was coming through the corner, it almost looked like something was coming off of the right front balance there. He had problems in, in practice where he cut a tire down and really hit the wall hard. But I think they have that truck on the ground so much that everything on the front end is basically dragging, especially on the lower air pressure here in the early laps. Yeah, that's that's the main thing right now. You're on low air. You're gonna that's gonna get better as you go along here. There was a side-by-side -side battle for fourth. Now Kevin Harvick, again, he started 
way back in 24th position and Harvick's made his way all the way up to 10th so into the top 10 after three laps. But did you see how he was down on the inside and all those trucks on the outside of him hooked up together drove right on by him and left him sitting down on the bottom by himself. You got to time your passes just right here. Riding along with Bill Lester currently running in the eighth position. Looking on the inside of him, the 99 of Ricky Craven trying to make the pass. Seeing all these trucks spark. Like I say, they have them down on the ground, soft springs, aggressive shocks. This racetrack is very smooth. That's what makes them so hard to drive when you qualify. That package that you need for the race is a little bit loose for qualifying. Side by side, that's not the fast way around Michigan. And look who's behind him, Kevin Harvick. He is a man on the move, because like you mentioned, he started back in the 24th position, four laps, he's already well into the top 10. One of the things that this, this one of those tracks is kind of aggravating as a driver. You can be a lot faster than the guy behind you, but you can't get away from him. Especially if his truck is handling really well, because he'll catch up with you in the turns. Bobby Labonte on the inside of Timothy Peters, getting a little bit close there. Timothy Peters hasn't run on a super speedway of two miles an hour, or two miles prior to this. He was not running at Daytona, wasn't approved for Daytona at the beginning of the season. Now, Bobby Labonte in the 47 truck qualified in 17th, but they had to change transmissions yesterday. He had to go to the rear of the field, working his way up. He's up to 26. But see how those trucks hook up in the draft on the outside there, the four truck 65, those guys, and run off and leave Bobby. They got the draft, he doesn't. Kevin Harvick continuing to move up. He's in the ninth position. Ricky Craven just in front of him. Bill Lester in front of those two. It's harder as you get closer to the front now. You might blow five, blow by four or five guys or ten back there in the mid-pack, but when you get up near the front, it gets a little tougher. Kevin Harvick not slowing down. He goes to the inside, tries to make the pass on Bill Lester. Now, this is when you can make a lot of moves right here. You can see three wide going down the back. And that's all because Rudiman went to the inside of the David Starr. They got side by side and opened up a big hole for these guys. Here comes Kevin Harvick on the inside. Ray, what's going on with Kevin? Well, guys, just want to let you know, it's a brand new chassis that Harvick is driving here. Now, they were going to bring this truck for Hornaday, but Harvick said, we got some experimental things on here, some things I've been wanting to try in truck racing. He said, we may let Hornaday run this the next time, but I wanted to make sure everything was reliable and that it did the things that I expected it to do. Boy, it sure appears so. Harvick made a great move to start this race on the outside. Side, now he's going to try the bottom. And Ray, he can run the truck anywhere he wants to. When he wants to turn it to the bottom, he can. When he wants to move it up, he can. So Kevin Harvick has moved from 24th all the way up to 6th position in just 7 laps of racing. Can Kevin Harvick catch them? By the time we get back from commercial break, we'll see. Kyle Busch still out in front of this pack. Speed Channel. It's a brand new show called Pinks. Lose the race, you lose your ride. Pinks pairs two ordinary drivers who put their cars in honor on the line. The rules are simple. The winner gets the other guy's car, and the loser has to find a ride home. Pinks premieres Wednesday, June 29th at 8.30 p.m. That's exclusively on Speed Channel. You know, at the top of the show, we talked about the struggles of the Dodges ever since Ted Musgrave and the one pretty much spanked them at St. Louis about a four or five weeks ago. But right now, you see Bobby Hamilton in the 04 started back in 31st. He's up to 11th, bringing Ted Musgrave with him in the one. And I talked to Ted Musgrave in the one this morning. He said, Larry, I know my truck is not fast, but you know what? I've got it driving good. No matter how fast the racetrack is, that's important. And one thing you know about Bobby Hamilton, I mean, this has been his trademark. Qualifies in the back. Blows what by half the field and gets himself to the front just in the nick of time. Yeah, that's 20 positions in 12 laps. Three Dodges running together there. Kyle Busch out in front in his Chevrolet. Looking for three wins in a row for him. Looks like Skinner might be chasing him down ever so slightly. Well, I've been watching the scoring monitor the last three or four laps, and Mike Skinner in the five is definitely about two tenths of a second a lap quicker right now because Mike finally shook his teammate Johnny Benson in the 23 and Rick Crawford in the 14. You lose so much time here racing with each other. It's not bad, but it's what the rotate with the right rear. Well, talking. 
referring to his crew chief, Todd Kleber, right behind him, the 47 of Bobby Labonte. And this is a track where we may see some bump drafting, boys. I hope not. Uh, that's not a good idea. Even here, the straightaway down the back is long enough, but it just upsets the guy in front of you so much, you've got to really have some experience to know how to handle that. Yeah, because you're you're turning almost the entire time down this front straightaway. You can see right there how much turn it has to it, how much curve. I think bump drafting should be taken out of these drivers' vocabulary because all it does is creates problems. It makes the guy mad or sometimes even causes wrecks. But well, Bobby Labonte was coming up on the back of the 50 of Todd Cleaver. What's going on with Bobby, Wendy? They are thinking about track bar or wedge adjustment on the 47 of Bobby Labonte when they do decide to come in. He's been loose everywhere. Now, what's interesting, when I talked to Randy Goss yesterday, he said we're pretty decent. I think we'll be pretty decent at the start of the race, but about 20 laps in, we're going to be really sporty. So it's interesting that we are at lap 16 and the 47 truck is already moving up. Well, it, it is, and his teammate Dennis Setzer now, he has really picked them up, putting them down. He's up to fifth place, just went around Ricky Craven. So whatever Bobby's needs, whatever Dennis has got, that's what Bobby needs. Setzer through 15 laps, makes his way up to fifth position. Dennis started back in 10th, so cut the lead in half. And Kevin Harvick in the 92 right there, the black and silver truck, he just had went by Setzer and Ricky Craven. But on that last lap, something happened over there, and he actually, they drove back by him, and you can see he actually lost a little ground to those guys. Well, let's see, Larry, we're at uh, 16 laps. I know that there's some concerns about these tires, uh, so I gotta be hoping that there's not a tire issue. We don't need that today. Can you be running too aggressive? We saw Kevin Harvick move through the field very rapidly. Could he have just burned his tires up early on? That's exactly what you do, Rick. You burn them up. I mean, you hustle that truck around here so hard, so fast. We got a challenge for the lead here, guys. Here comes Mike Skinner just behind the 15 of Kyle Busch. Skinner goes to the inside. Toyota trying to take the top spot away from Chevrolet in Michigan. And he, Mike he, Skinner grabs it. You can see he moved all the way to the bottom of the racetrack where he can get that side draft off of Kyle Busch to 15, but he was so much faster than Kyle Busch through the middle of the corner, and that speed carried all the way down the straightaway. Got to believe it's a five truck here with Skinner. Remember who his teammate was last year? Travis Guapo. And remember who won this race last year? Travis Travis I got to believe it. Skinner probably had a few notes left over from that little deal. Hey, Ray, what's happening with Kyle Busch? Well, Rick, he has decided to drop back a little bit. He's experiencing a tight and loose condition, and I believe we're going to get a yellow flag right now as uh, there's a smoker out on the track, number 13, Tracy Hines, with problems. Uh, whether or not they pit here will be a big variable. Kyle said he was going to try to save some tires here. That's why he dropped back from Skinner, because he was at a tight, loose condition. Ray, I believe they need to come in right now, though, because of the tire concerns that wear is a factor. I'd come in and take a look at mine if I was these guys. Well, I think we know we're going to see them the pit road at least for fuel and maybe look at the tires because here at lap 18 to 19, this puts them in that one-stop window that they can make it on one stop from here. The trucks qualified earlier today, and during qualifying, there was actually two showers that made them pause the qualifying effort and so sometimes when you get a rain a hard rain it will clean the track off but the trucks were able to qualify and then cup cars came back out and so they laid more rubber down on the track so there should be enough rubber on the track to not have it be a green track yeah that's that's why you always worry about tire wear when you first hit a racetrack uh, particularly if the tires a little on the borderline uh, you're gonna wear the tires more until you get a, a some rubber laid down on the track itself and that has happened I feel confident the tire wear is going to be a pro not going to be a problem. Our aerial coverage is courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tires. Well, we'll see what these uh, gentlemen down here on top of these pit boxes decide to do here, Larry. Well, again, I just can't imagine here that you're, you're, all, you're approaching halfway through a fuel run. You'll at least want to take advantage of this and put fuel in those trucks. And I would say Mr. Skinner in the five truck will lead everyone down pit road. I'm going to get me four tires right now because I want to know how good my tire wear is. And this is a good indication right here. Mike Skinner leading the pack down pit road, winding. Johnny Benson is one of the first trucks on pit road, but fuel only for the 23, a little bit of strategy. They also went down one round on the track bar, right? Mike Skinner wants to go with four tires here. They wanted to get a good look and see what kind of wear they have. The 
especially because he wrecked the primary truck in practice. They'll come around and do that. Everybody go into work. Chris Berger will hang the rear tire, and he wanted me to say happy birthday to his mom, Sherry. These guys have no problem and get away, but Skinner will not be the leader. Johnny Benson and the 15 look like they're the first two off of pit road. Looks like Kyle Busch maybe came off pit road second there, but I talked to Greg Ely, Johnny Benson's crew chief this morning, and he said, what we work on the entire weekend is making sure we have tires saved for the end of this race. Looks like they're on that strategy again. Our first stop has taken place in Michigan. We were under our first caution of the day for smoke. We'll be back with more of the Paramount Health Insurance 200 on Speed Channel. 24 Hours of Le Mans continues tonight live on Speed Channel, deemed one of the greatest sports car races in the world, where endurance is parallel with speed. Don't miss 24 Hours of Le Mans continuing tonight live only on Speed Channel following the Truck Series. Got an update from Ray uh, down in the pits there. What they did on the 16th truck, remember he came on pit road to start the race? Pretty smart. It's an impound race, so you can't work on the truck. They had their fenders pulled in for qualifying, which keeps the truck from being so loose. They came on pit road when they started the race, pulled them out to as wide as they could go for the race. So that was that was pretty smart. And of course, they'd have to go to the rear of the field, but they had qualified 30th, so they really didn't, only gave up six positions by doing that. And we're on one to go here, boys. One to go, let's get back to racing. It appears the top four trucks fueled only Johnny Benson in the 23, Kyle Busch in the 15, Ted Musgrave in the one, and David Rudiman in the 17. Mike Skinner in the fifth position in the five truck. We know he did four times. Is that going to be the kiss of death for the four in front of him? I mean, Mike Skinner and the rest of the field, will they just go right by him? Golly, we, week in, week out, we, we, we say that, you know, four tires is going to be better than the guy that didn't take any. But we've also seen it work just the opposite, where that, uh, you know, we haven't run that many laps. Sometimes it doesn't make any difference. And we know at a racetrack like this, especially for Johnny Benson in the 23, normally being out front is the place to be in that clean air. Clean air, track position, clean air seems to be a little more critical than four fresh tires. Johnny Benson out in front because of the race actually off of pit road. And it was close. See Kyle Busch in the 15 by sitting on the, the pole had the first pit selection. He had that last pit going out. All he has to do is move a little bit. He almost won the race, but not quite. Talking about tires last week at Pocono, we saw no tires, two tires, and four tires on green flag stops at the end of the race. And it didn't seem to make a lot of difference. Ray. Hey, guys, let me tell you how smart Kyle Busch is. They wanted to tighten up his truck a little bit, so they decided to do it with a wedge adjustment and also with the track bar. Kyle Busch looked in his mirror, and he says, hey, you're going the wrong way. He told the crew member they were actually making an adjustment that would have loosened him up. And Kyle, the driver, saw it in the rearview mirror, and they fixed the problem here. Even though they didn't put tires on, they did make a big chassis adjustment. And just remember, he's 19 years old. That's the big 20. 20 years old. Just turn 20. Just turn 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. The 15 truck doesn't waste any time in getting up alongside of Johnny Benson going out into turn one. It looks like he might complete the pass on the restart here. Kyle Busch back out in front of this field. Four different drivers have been officially out in front. Kyle Busch has led 16 laps. Mike Skinner, along with Johnny Chapman and Johnny Benson, have been the leaders of this race. What happened on Kyle's pit stop was he wants wedge in and track bar up, and it's very easy to get confused when you're going to make two adjustments that take different, you have to do different things. And Darrell, also remember, when you look in a rearview mirror, things are backwards, so he was seeing <laughs> The yeah. wrench go backwards. Yeah, I've called in before that. and I've said, are you sure you went the right way? <laughs> you had to do that with Hammond a lot. Oh, yeah. Wendy. Talking about Johnny Benson, we mentioned he did take fuel only. Now, when I talked to Greg Ely yesterday, they said, now this truck is capable of winning. It's the same package that they had last year at Michigan when they finished fourth. So the setup in this truck is the same thing. They haven't made any changes all weekend, Greg said, and they've been pretty happy in race, tram, race trim. Now, he did tell me that they feel like their Toyota truck has the handling, the aero, and the horsepower, all three, three things that you need at Michigan. 
I'll tell you one thing. There's no substitute for draft. These guys can really, really pull up on each other here. These trucks make such a huge hole in the air. And look at this. Three wide. Three wide for the lead. All kinds of different moves. Ted Musgrave and the one actually led that lap right there. But now Mike Skinner with those four fresh tires, along with Kevin Harvick in the 92, who has four tires, they want to get back up there. It's amazing, though. These guys, look back behind them here. The 14 truck hung down on the inside, and they just drive off and leave him. There goes Benson down on the bottom. We got us a great race going on here, guys. These trucks put on one whale of a show. Love this racetrack, though. Three wide as the field comes out of turn number four out in front, trying to pull away Mike Skinner. And then a jockey for position for second. Look at that. Four wide. Rick Crawford on the bottom of the track. Tries to get up into the top five. We're a quarter of the way through this race. We have 13 cars. It's less than two trucks. Less than two seconds from each other. Almost did it. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Harvick moved from 24th starting position all the way up to third. And he'll be battling for the lead in no time. Boy, you picked the wrong lane here. And you're going to go backwards. Look at the 17 truck. Got hung up in the center there. He's got no choice. He's going back through the field here because he can't get back in line. Hey, what another truck on the move right there. That 10 truck, Terry Cook, started back in the 19th position. A couple of good runs under his belt over the last couple of weeks. He's on the move with that four. Yeah, that team has really, really turned itself around, and he has done a great job last several weeks. Just over a quarter of this race in the books. And so far, we've had six different lead changes between five different drivers. Ted Musgrave adds his name to the list in Michigan. Who will win in the backyard of manufacturers? He's battling for position right here. Rick Crawford holding on to the 11th spot, but you can throw a blanket over these five trucks. Yeah, and I noticed the uh, 17 Rudiman's truck, those cow flaps, they're flapping up and down like he's getting a lot of air up under the hood of that truck. But I'm going to tell you what, battle is an understatement. Oh, Maybe yeah. going at it like this for about three or four laps. Oh, this is war. Toyotas and Chevys running Whoa, together. Rudiman gets a shot from the back there. I think that's Brandon Witt in the 38 car. Got him loose. That's, that's just what I worry about, that bump grabbing thing. You had mentioned you would... You would like bump drafting to be outlawed. No, well, no, I don't level. say outlawed. I say the out of their vocabulary. <laughs> they use it way too much. Kyle Busch has been dropping back. Ray, what's going on? Well, guys, he's very, very loose, and uh, they just can't quite figure that out because they're sure that the chassis adjustments they made were to tighten him up by going down on the track bar, but he said it just doesn't feel like it's into the track. When it comes off the corners, he can barely hold on to it, and he is dropping way back in the field right now, just way too loose for the Ditech Chevy. And I think the biggest thing, Ray, he's one of those trucks that elected not to use a set of tires, fuel only, and you get in amongst a bunch of trucks that have changed tires, you, you just can't maneuver the truck. They're going to make you loose. You, they got tires and you don't, you're going to think you're loose because they're so much better than you are. Kevin Harvick is out in front of the field now, and the battle for second takes place between Terry Cook, Mike Skinner, and Dennis Setzer. Those three trucks vying for one spot. Pretty impressed with, impressed with that 10 truck. He's gotten better every week. They're right on the verge of closing the deal. Terry Cook, five career wins, but the last one came in 2002. So it has been a long stint since Terry Cook has found victory lane. Where was that, Indianapolis? That was IRP. Yeah, I remember that race. He was really strong. Trouble down here, turn four, got a truck around. Looks like Johnny Benson getting spun around into the grass. Made contact with somebody. I couldn't tell who it was. Second caution of the day comes out. Back up on the racetrack. And this has got to be a big, big break for Kyle Busch. Yeah, because uh, is that him coming down pit road? Yep. Yeah. Remember Johnny oh, Benson. He's got to close here. We're going to have to come back anyway. I think so, he's got uh, to right the field's getting into two here with no pace car, so these guys can pick it up a little bit. 
Remember, Johnny Benson, that 23 truck was just like Kyle Busch, one of the trucks that did not take tires last time. Ray, talk to us about Kyle. Well, guys, I'm not sure exactly what the situation here is. When you figure the caution came out, they should have stayed out there, but he has a tire that is torn all up on the right rear. We'll get you a shot here so you can see this right rear tire. It just came off of this truck. It has absolutely got cords all over the place, and that is the problem. Kyle said he was going to wreck the truck if he went another lap, so that's why they decided to come down pit road, but this tire is absolutely destroyed. So maybe it was a good call for him because if that tire would have come apart, it could have torn the truck to pieces. But they will have to go to the back of the line for pitting early, but that may be okay. But, Darrell, you said it a while ago. When that caution came out, there's 33 laps. That's what we talked at the top of the show. That's about the laps that teams were having trouble yesterday. You wanted those four tires that first stop. Johnny Benson comes in for service on the 23. He is the reason for our most recent caution as he was trying to get through three and four he got sideways and into the grass. It appears that the guys that did not take tires on that first caution are having some sort of some problems. I'm not sure what they all are. Of course, Benson got spun out, but uh, you can certainly see that Kyle Busch had a tire problem. And so as Johnny Benson comes off of pit road, the reason he had to come and get a new set of tires is because of this spin coming out of three and four. Terry Cook takes over the top spot of the Paramount Health Insurance 200 on Speed Channel. This most recent caution brought out by Johnny Benson sent some trucks to pit road that had stopped and put on tires and others that hadn't put tires on down pit road to put those tires on. So now everyone's on a level playing field, but some have a little more fuel than others. Those that came in that already had put tires on earlier. It appears the top 12 trucks on this restart stayed out completely that time. So they're off sequence now as far as fuel. Ray, what's going on with pit strategy? Well, Rick, here's what I think, you know, like Kevin Harvick's one of the guys that came down here on lap 35 to get fuel. He had changed tires on 18. Well, what does that give you? Well, that expands your window over the other guys that did pit on 18. It's not a big difference, but it may be enough if we get a long green flag run here. It lets them stay out and the other guys have to pit under green. So the guys that came down here for fuel are just gambling a little bit on the fact that this race will go green. And for the most part, with that pit stop right there, with those trucks changing tires that did not change a while ago, for the most part, every one of the top contenders have used one set of tires. And Larry, now those that came in on lap 18, and we've seen a little bit of tire problems with Kyle Busch after about 30 laps of racing. Can we expect around 50 laps some of these guys to maybe experience some problems similar to that? Well, I think it depends on how your truck's handling and maybe what your tires look like the first time. That's going to be a big key, but how your truck handles has a big role in it, too. And I've watched that 15 year, all year long, and they, they have a tendency to have some tire problems. So I've seen it in the past. Is that because he runs loose? Really loose. Really uses the right rear of that truck. Right hand side of your screen, see Kevin Harvick in the 92, battling Sean Murphy in the 07. And as Ray pointed out, Kevin Harvick did fuel only that time, so he's full of fuel. Terry Cook out in front, Power Stroke Diesel by International number 10, and second place begins to heat up. Mike Skinner just in front of Dennis Setzer, Steve Park, Ricky Craven making his way up into the hunt. You mentioned Steve Park in that 62 truck, started back in 26, our winner from California. Now he really didn't drive up to the top 10 by strategy because he had already was already there before that caution came out a while ago. Lap 40, Steve Park trying to hold on to fifth position. Tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. live on Speed Channel, it's Formula One racing at its finest from Indianapolis. Formula One United States Grand Prix. F1's greatest drivers attack the legendary racetrack at Indy. Full cross the famous yard of Briggs first tomorrow at 1.30. You're watching the Paramount Health Insurance 200 on Speed Channel from Brooklyn, Michigan. Michigan International Speedway. Ricky Craven 
trying to take away the top spot from Larry Cook. Man, he's got his hands full. She's wobbling on him. He's going to get away from that 10 truck now to the bottom of the racetrack. Ricky Craven, he'll lead that lap here at lap 44. And the Blue Oval fans ought to be going wild right now. They're up there first and second. Eight different leaders. All four manufacturers have been out in front, and now Terry Cook is going to take the spot right back from Ricky Craven. But that's been the two lines these trucks have been running for about the last 10 laps. Terry Cook has been running the high side. Ricky Craven has been hugging that white line through the corners. Rick Crawford, Kevin Harvick battling for ninth position. Crawford out in front. Harvick, another driver who's been hugging the white line. There's just so much with the gear rule they've got and everything. Oh, she got a trouble down here again in turn uh, three and four. Three and four, smoke coming out of the back as they spin around. That's Clay Rogers in the 65. Got side by side with someone. I couldn't see who the other truck was and just sucked him around. Third caution of the day coming out. Clay Rogers back out onto the track, but that does put us under our third caution of the day, so we may see pit stops when we come back. Welcome back to the Paramount Health Insurance 200 on Speed Channel, and here they come down pit road. Wendy. Dennis Setzer was running third when that caution came out. They are going to come in and take four tires, fuel, and a slight track bar adjustment. They're going to go back up on the track bar. Marty Houston on the front, Rodney McGee jacking, and Mark Presnell on the rear, as it looks like a pretty routine stop on the 46 truck. Let's check in with Ray. Well, Wendy, the Power Stroke Diesel Ford came in, but they're not going to put tires on for Terry Cook. Just tire, or just fuel only, excuse me. And a couple of guys went over the wall to take a look at his tires. They said everything looks fine. They took one round of wedge out of the right rear for Cook, but no tires, just fuel for the Power Stroke Diesel Ford. That time staying out, Todd Bodine, Jimmy Spencer. So Todd Bodine takes over the top spot, making him the ninth different driver to lead this race. Here Brandon Witt had a pit stop problem. He's going to be black flag missing a lug nut. He'll have to come in and talked about 35 trucks still on the lead lap. That's a long way. He's going to restart this race at the halfway point. Yeah, they had the hood up on Lester's Toyota there. I don't know what they were doing on the hood, but they uh, that kept him on pit road for a while. Craftsman's always on the cutting edge of technology when it comes to tools. Today we want to spotlight another important piece of equipment that Craftsman makes available to all of us in the Craftsman Tool Tech. Just before a driver heads out to the racetrack, one of his crew members will take a torque wrench like this one and actually make sure that each of the lug nuts are good and tight. That way they know there's not going to be a loose wheel. Well, Craftsman has a brand new torque wrench, and here's what I really like about it. See these two windows? This one shows you in English foot-pounds, and this one in metric. It's a digital readout to tell you exactly the number you're looking for. You want to change it? Well, you just drop this dial, turn the lever, and that changes it from 5 to 80 foot-pounds in half-pound increments. This is a tool that engine builders use all day long, and if you need one, make sure you get one that's accurate. It'll say Craftsman. Brandon Witt in the 38 back on pit road. So it, it appears, Wendy, that possibly the trucks that went ahead and took that second set of tires, they're banking on this thing going green the last half of the race. We're, we're looking at the tires that just came off the 17 truck on the last caution, not this most recent caution. These were 35 lap tires. You see the cords? They're actually showing on three of the tires, the right front, the left front, and the right rear all have cords showing from the 17 truck. A lot of teams have come down to this pit and checked out tires from the 17. Now, the 17 does not run a real aggressive shut setup, so it's a little bit surprising to see these tires go as quickly as they did. The fear now is that teams will be running out of tires by the end of the race. Well, that's the areas where you have problems on the shoulders, and he's obviously wearing the shoulder of the tire out, camber related, and of course it could be uh, air related as well. 
But like she mentioned, uh, a lot of these teams, they've used up a lot of those, a lot of tires already, and we're just approaching the halfway point. Pace truck makes its way back down pit road. Terry Cook back in the field of ways, and now it's Todd Bodine out in front leading the pack. Jimmy Spencer up into second right now. We'll see if he can hold on to that position. New tires behind him. Get our top six trucks right now and elected to stay out, including our leader Todd Bodine in the 66 truck. Now a battle for the top spot going down the back stretch. Jimmy Spencer on the inside of Todd Bodine. And that side-by-side -side racing is going to open the door for Johnny Benson to suck up behind them and try to make the pass on Todd Bodine. And this to uh, what too long ago, Benson caused the caution, you know, spinning out there in three and four. So he's uh, got himself back up in a good track position. Jimmy Spencer in the two truck, he will lead the halfway point of this race, 50 laps down, 50 to go, started back in the 27th position in that dodge. That's just good pit work, Larry. They make good pit strategy here and uh, got themselves good track position. And uh, Spencer's leading the race, and he's really struggled the last two or three races, so uh, good to see the old Dodge back out front. And I know he still has one good set of tires left. He's only changed tires the one time back on lap 34. Pretty gone not keeping up with the rest of the field in the 77 Dodge. What's going on, Wendy? They do have a right front flat, going flat on the 77 truck. All the, the guys are on the wall. I don't know when they're going to be coming in, but the right front seems to be flat on the 77. I you know one thing, if he thinks he's got a right front flat, he better not stay out there very long. That's not a tire you want to play around with. Oh, and he going back and forth now, just trying to get the feel of that truck. Kyle Busch. We've seen problems in that area where he did not stop for tires early on, dropped way back, and now looks like he's trying to make his way back up to the field. He's currently in sixth position. Yeah, I don't know, though. That track, I don't know if that truck's right or not yet. Uh, it looks like it's better than it was, for sure. It's like the only time it was right when it was out front leading. Once he got beat off pit road. Got trouble down here in turn four again, guys. Got, a, got the, the 12 truck around. Robert Huffman. Problems again coming through three and four. That's the third time Here's today we've seen it. Robert Huffman spinning through three and four and gets into the infield grass. We've seen these problems happen before. Most of the time, it's been by the help of someone else. We'll find out if Robert Huffman had help when we come back. Welcome back to Michigan in the Paramount 200. A couple of drivers deciding to come to pit road. One of those being Ricky Craven. He has a special paint scheme on today for the new Batman Begins movie. Craven came in the last time and they had a horrible stop. Craven on the radio saying, guys, why do we even practice? We lost so much track position, but right now, this is a fuel mileage strategy. No tires there, but they wanted to get fuel. We'll see whether they're really in a window to make it the distance, Wendy. The 17 of David Rudiman was running fourth, and he decided to come down pit road as well. He took four tires and tightened up the truck just a little bit. I showed you the courts not long ago on that first set of tires, how awful they look. So they're not taking any chances in the 17 pit, but you also have to wonder if they're going to run out. Well, Wendy, I think there were a lot of trucks that did not want to see that caution, but Brendan got in the 77. He stayed out. Remember, we talked about him having a right front going soft. He was able to stay out, catch the caution, change that tire, and he's still on the lead lap. Jimmy Spencer out in front of the field. Coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed Channels brought to you in part by Chevy. Back underway with the Paramount Health Insurance 200 on Speed Channel. Jimmy Spencer holding on to the top spot. Kevin Harvick has moved up to second to challenge him for that lead. Three and four wide has not been out of the ordinary on this track today. I'm going to tell you what, though, a man on a mission, that blue truck up there by himself, Bobby Hamilton in the 04 truck, he restarted 18th three laps ago. He's moved in the top 10, battling right now for the seventh position with Mike Skinner in the five. The reason being, watch where he goes when he gets down here, Rick. Watch him go in the corner. Everybody else kind of dies. See, Mike Skinner drops down. He runs really, really high. He's passed trucks on the outside when I know they didn't think there was enough room. And you see the dark line in the corner. It looks like that's the groove. He's running a full truck link outside of the groove. And he, he does it all the time. I saw him do it at Atlanta. I saw him do it at Charlotte. 
He just finds a, a groove out here. He goes, watch him up on the outside. Look, they he's going to get three down. on them right here. They slow down. He keeps his speed up. Goes right by him. You're right. He won Atlanta last year doing that right there, right up against the wall. And you know what you call that, Rick? Experience. Well, he does have experience racing a truck as our reigning champion right now in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. He's going to make a three wide. Ted Musgrave on the inside. Kyle Busch and Bobby Hamilton on the outside. But if the Dodgers are hurting on the straightaway, what he's doing up there, he's keeping that thing wound up. He's keeping the RPMs up. I don't see the Dodgers hurting too much. He got one leading and him a coming. One leading and third and fourth is Ted Musgrave and Bobby Hamilton right behind them, Kyle Busch, but then Steve Park in the Dodge rounding out the top six. Forty laps to go. Larry, can those guys that made stops most recently, can they make it on fuel? I think so because, A, the pace has slowed down just a little bit. You're not going to use as much fuel there. The guys told me this morning, 40 to 45 laps on fuel. They pitted with 46 to go. We had one or two caution laps there. I think definitely some of those trucks could make it to the end. I think that the crew chiefs are holding their breath. They can make it on fuel. Can they make it on tires based on what we've seen from where? Uh, and it, like on the 17 truck, it wasn't just one tire, it's all four of them. And one driver who was holding his breath earlier was the 23 of Johnny Benson. Wendy? Yeah, just moments ago, Rick, Johnny Benson got a little bit loose, had a little bit of a wiggle on the track, got a little scary for Johnny Benson. He came over the radio and said, you know what, I could tell I need to save my tires. This is definitely an issue on the track today as I look at a set of stickers still sitting on the wall of the 23 pit. to go right on by. Man, when you have to lift, you just lose so much momentum. And here goes Ted Musgrave for the lead. Teammates side by side. Ted Musgrave on the outside. Johnny Benson Whoa, on the inside. Spencer trying to squeeze in there between uh, Musgrave and Bobby Hamilton, and he made it. Three dodges line up in Michigan. And now Bobby Hamilton will take his patented high line around this racetrack. You're seeing those look three out, dodges run three different lines right there. Boy, Spencer was coming up the hill, and that's sliding up into people off a of four is so easy to do the way this season started jimmy spencer bobby hamilton across the start finish line within thousands of a seconds of each other bobby hamilton ends up going to victory lane after they push jimmy spencer out of victory lane and that's the way the 05 season started well i think they got to be feeling pretty good about their program today with musgrave leaving leading bobby there in second and of course jimmy running third the Dodgers are looking pretty racy today to me. And Steve Park in another Dodge, he's back in fifth in the 62. Kevin Harvick trying to spoil the Dodge party in Michigan. We'll be back with more of the Paramount Health Insurance 200. <laughs> Coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed Channel is brought to you by Chevy, the new Chevrolet, an American Revolution, and by Super Chips. Power has never been easier. Looking down from the Goodyear blimp on the Michigan International Speedway, we're under caution number five. Brad Keselowski got spun around and brought out our fifth caution of the day on lap 64. Now we see Ted Musgrave bringing quite a few trucks down pit road with him. As we have just 35 laps to go. Wendy? Our leader and Bobby Hamilton, Ted Musgrave and Bobby Hamilton come to a stop. The one truck will pull tape off, but that's it. No other adjustments on the one truck. Now you see they are putting scuff tires on. If we turn around and look at the 404 of Bobby Hamilton, he is putting stickers on the on his Dodge truck. Ray, what do you have on your end of pit road? The good red Chevy and Kevin Harvick is in, Wendy, and they've got sticker tires also. This is his pit crew from the Nextel Cup Series. These guys do good work. Get him back out onto the racetrack. Harvick with four fresh tires. Those that came to pit road, David Rudiman was the first off of pit road. He had complained earlier about getting a little bit warm in that truck. Yeah, I'm not so sure they didn't pull a piece of debris off the grill of that truck. They pulled something off of it. I saw it in the crew member's hand. I don't know if he picked up a wrapper of some nature or if it was a piece of tape that they pulled off. But he was complaining about being hot. 
I'm going to tell you who has some pretty good strategy. Ricky Craven in the 99, who ran up front, especially in the early part of the race. He stayed out that time, but just about eight or ten laps ago, he pitted for fuel and for four fresh tires. So that could be a good move on Mike Beam in that part. Go ahead, Ray. Hey, Larry, that was lap 54 when Craven came in that last time, and I asked Mike Beam, how are you going to be on fuel? He said, we need six or seven laps of caution, and we're going to be okay to make it. We're done pitting for the day. If we didn't get any more caution, he was going to be very, very close, maybe in trouble, but with this little bit of caution, they think they can make it. Well, Ray, obviously, these cautions right here are helping. Remember, the formula normally at a two-mile racetrack is two caution laps equal one green lap, so they're certainly hoping we run at least one or two more cautions, but the pace slowing down a little bit, they very well to make it. Well, we're, on, we're on one to go, Larry. And one thing I've noticed about these single car spins and so forth, you don't have very long cautions. They've been pretty fast. Couple three laps, you're back to green racing. High above Michigan International Speedway for 80 years. One of America's most recognizable images, the Goodyear blimp, was floating overhead, providing these aerial views and reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tires. So, 34 trucks still on the lead lap, two off of the pace. Brad Keselowski most recently in the 29, and Tracy Hines was off the track 50 laps ago. Now, the way these cautions are falling, it's, it's almost impossible to go a lap down unless you have some sort of mechanical problem. Ray Dunlap mentioned at the beginning of the show, 18 lead changes was the record between seven different leaders and so far we've had 14 lead changes between 11 different drivers now the problem with all those cars or trucks on the lead lap if you have to come down pit road for some reason under a caution and you restart in 35th or fourth place it's going to be tough to win the race from there just remember those lead changes are monitored at the start finish line only. We've had a lot more lead changes than that. That's exactly right. Down the back stretch, we've seen numerous lead changes take place, but those don't get logged. I'll tell you what we've had a lot more of is near misses. <laughs> yes, we have. Now, I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but we've had some close calls out there on the racetrack. Well, and how, how much more aggressive do you drive when you get within 33 laps of the finish line? Man, it's just like a time bomb. It just keeps ticking, and it keeps ticking louder and louder when it gets down near the end of the race. Steve Park out in front of the field now as they come back to the green flag. Just behind him, Ricky Craven in the 99, still looking for his first ever win in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. First to fall out of line, the 38 of Brandon Witt goes to the inside of the first three, he falls back in the line as they go down the back stretch. Toyota's early on with a big story, qualifying six in the top ten. Now Toyotas have two in the top five. And then they fall off to David Rudiman, who's currently in tenth position. <laughs> He, he's he is covered up. Look at all those trucks. That is a that is a wide yes, right there. It is boys. A wide. That's not a mini wide. That's a wide. Here comes Jimmy Spence and look out for the the exciting weather that could take place right there. Four wide as they make it through the corner. One thing about these trucks, they handle well enough and they're good enough that you can get away with this. Trucks have a lot, a lot of downforce on them. Not the fastest way around running four wide. Oh, no, no. Somebody's going to lose out in this deal. And the main thing is you just don't want to run over somebody. Kyle Busch, our full sitter. You now. can run into somebody. <laughs> just don't run over them. Looking on the inside of Terry Cook. Kyle Busch falling back to 18th position. Yeah, he just hadn't been able to get that truck back up under him. Now, he started off great, but they've had a lot of issues. And ever since he had that right rear tire problem, he had never been able to get that truck tight enough. Mike Skinner making an aggressive move on Jimmy Spencer. Ducks to the inside. Well, that's where you got to really have a good handling truck to run that bottom right there. You can very bottom and very top. That's where you want to be able to run if you can. Remember, a lot of these guys, their own fresh tires right now, they're able to maneuver that truck that way. 
Steve Park still out in front of this field. Ricky Craven, Todd Bodine, Brandon Witt, Matt Crafton are your top five. Rookie Clay Rogers with another impressive run in sixth position. Yeah, that kid's done a great job for Bobby. I mean, he's really Bobby Hamilton. He's done a good job. Now, as we watch on the left-hand side of your screen, our leader Steve Park, the 62, remember we talked about it earlier, wanted a racetrack similar to this at Fontana back at the beginning of the season. But Ray Dunlap, we were talking to him there, he has not been on pit road since lap 47. So if you add 45 laps of that, Ray, that means he's going to be a little short making it to the end. Yeah, Larry, they cannot make it, and they know that, and it's part of their strategy. Believe it or not, they've got a set of stickers here sitting on the wall. They believe there's going to be a caution somewhere around 30 to go, and they think that's enough time to get back out there and make a run. I, I, you know, I mean, we're almost there now, so or are we there? I don't know. But Actually passed it, Rick. Okay, so, I, so, Rick, I don't know how long they can go and still use a set of stickers and get back through the field, but this is a planned move for them as they're holding on tires. I believe the guy that, again, is in the catbird seat based on pit strategy is the 99. I think he might be backing up just a little bit, saving a little fuel just to be safe, because I think he's in the best shape tire-wise we know. Steve Park out in front of the field. He was able to jump in front of the field in California the last six laps to claim his first truck series win. Health Insurance 200, and we see problems with the 38 of Brandon Witt, and we saw a very slow running 99 of Ricky Craven. You see the front end damage of the 38 and the back end of the 99 with damage. Quite a bit of contact here. The 99 gets uh, gets the one on the outside and gets him loose. See him get sideways. Here comes the 38 with a full head of steam and just rams into the back of the 99. No fault to Brandon Witt's because the 99 was out of the gas. Both these guys were still running in the top 10. Now, it's hard to say that this caution is a break for anyone, but I'm going to consider it a break for Steve Park at 62. Like Ray reported, he needs to get to pit road as soon as possible. He can use his four fresh tires and get full of fuel. He couldn't make it to the end. But, well, it's a long way to go in a short time That's to get going. there. That's the good news. You got a caution. Bad news is you're going to restart 33rd. <laughs> but we saw how important tires were when those four trucks early on stayed out, and they just got gobbled up. Well, that's where Kyle Busch backed up. Here comes Park. That's going to be a lonely feeling for him because you see everyone else is staying out for the most part. Steve Park making the lonely drive down pit road. Ray. Steve Park will get four fresh tires on his Orleans Racing Dodge. Now, guys, remember, he had a good run at Charlotte with a fifth place run, but the last couple of weeks, not so good. At Texas last week, he was out front, but he had a speeding penalty going off pit road late in the race. That put him to the back. They will put four tires on here and also watch for a track bar adjustment. You see the wedge wrench goes in there where the track bar hole is, and they will go one round backwards on the track bar. Four tires, a hang up on the right front as the right front tire will be slow here, but they've got plenty of time with us being under caution and not many people on pit road. Not sure what the problem is there, but uh, whether they lost a lug nut for Harley Roush or whatever on the front, he is the front tire changer. But again, no big pressure here as they will get their service complete. Four fresh tires for part. Road and will go to the back of the field as most of the field stayed out under this last caution. Ten years of beating and banging, ten years of the toughest racing in NASCAR. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series only on Speed Channel. Our next stop, the Milwaukee Mile for race number 11. Last year, Ted Musgrave won that race from the pole position. It's the Toyota Tundra Milwaukee 200. That's this Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Live, only on Speed Channel, your home of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Ray, what's happening with the 99? Well, Rick, apparently they will be done for the day here. Uh, Ricky Craven said he didn't think the damage was that extensive, but they realized that uh, they had two brake lines that were busted, and also it looks like uh, the rear end got moved over a couple of inches there, too. So they said, let's go behind the wall and try to work on it. Mike Beam took a look at it and says, uh, not enough time. We're done for the day. So Craven, who came in here just 17 points out of the lead, will not have a very good day for Batman and the superheroes.
Craven's damage took place when he got a little bit loose on the inside of another truck and then Brandon Witt got right up behind him. Toyota Spotlight lets us take a closer look at where today's field of Toyota Tundras are currently running. Riding along with Bill Lester. Toyotas have been out in front in this race. Mike Skinner has held on to the top spot. It's going to be a little hairy up there. Todd Bergine currently in fifth in position. Rudiman holding on to 16th has had problems today, but has been able to hold on for a decent run so far. And then Kenny Schrader, your other driver, Daryl, up yeah. there. Yeah, Kenny's doing a good job. I don't think he's terribly happy with his truck, but he's doing a good job. He's a veteran, you know. He'll, he'll bring her home in good shape. Robert Huffman is taking a spin through the grass already today, but is able to keep the truck out onto the track. Best I can tell, you better reach up there and pull those belts tight again. <laughs> yeah. There's 20 yeah. to go. Yeah, you don't want to even, you don't want to even think about boogity 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 <laughs> here because they're going to get it on. You can bet on that. Kevin Harvick out in front as they take the green flag. 30 laps of racing or 20 laps of racing to go. Just behind him, Bobby Hamilton. No stranger to victory lane. Got us a little 20 lap shootout here, boys, and I think she's going to get sight. See Mike Skinner and that five truck continue to make moves on the inside. Now watch Bobby Hamilton, the 4 I'm sure he'll go to the top of the racetrack here. He stays about midways of the racetrack. Harvick in the 92 right around the bottom. Kind of have a little slide room here coming off. He's got so much speed. Bobby down in front of, uh, of Harvick and away they go. Hamilton has not led until that point right there. And so Bobby Hamilton now one of our lap leaders making him the 12th different driver to be in front. In 12 laps ago he restarted back in 19th position and here he takes the lead in that 04 truck. He's been one of the drivers that have have committed to the outside of this track. He's been able to pass guys on the outside of the groove. Yeah, but watch this. Now that he's got the lead, let's see where he goes. Three different trucks, three different lines through turn three and four. I, I, I thought he would run. Once he got the lead, I thought he might go to the bottom, which I think he probably wishes he had him, because as you can see, all three of those guys got Well, two of them got by him anyway. But Dennis Setzer in that 46 truck, he takes the lead with 18 laps to go. Adds his name to the long list of drivers that have been out in front. That's what I love about the end of every race that we go to, whether it's cup, truck, bush, whatever. You don't know who's holding what until we got down inside those last 10 or 15 laps. 17 different lead changes between 13 different drivers. And Ted Musgrave looking to the outside now. Dennis Setzer for the top spot. Todd Bodine in that 66 truck didn't have that great of a qualifying run. Qualified back in 18th, one of the slower Toyotas in qualifying, but he's worked his way through a little strategy up to the sixth position. Kyle Busch trying to take away the spot from Todd Bodine. Busch running on the inside of the 66. One thing we know about the 15 now, we know he's plenty fast. And maybe he was just taking it conservative up to this point, saving his tires because he knew he had a little bit of a tire issue. Jack Sprague trying to make it two in a row. Bobby Hamilton falling behind him. Sprague in 19th position. Bobby Labonte is behind him in the 47. Side by side Crawford and Terry Cook. Those two currently running in the 10th and 9th positions. And so with just over 15 laps to go in this one, Dennis Setzer, Ted Musgrave, and Kevin Harvick are your top three. <laughs> Coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed Channel is brought to you in part by Craftsman, celebrating 10 years tough of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. By PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. By Superchip, power has never been easier. And by new Mobile One Extended Performance, official motor oil of NASCAR. Dennis Setzer holding on to the top spot. Ted Musgrave, Kevin Harvick, Mike Skinner, and Kyle Busch round out your top five. Kenny Schrader's off the pace down the back there, I believe. 
See this battle on the right hand side of your screen. Mike Skinner in the five, Kyle Bush in the 15. These guys been going at each other, but they can't stand to run side by side too long because with only 11 to go, those top three are getting away. And now the top three decide to split up, run different lines through the corners, but down the back stretch they line up nose to tail. That's what you want here. If uh, you've been out back here battling all day long, you like to settle it down between two or three guys so you don't get wadded up here. Dennis Setzer, the last time he visited Victory Lane was Texas last year. His best finish this year, Gateway, finished second earlier. Ten to go. Ted Musgrave getting right behind the 46 of Dennis Setzer. Now, Darrell, as a driver, last 10 laps, do you set a guy up in a, in a race where drafting is so important? Do you run a certain line and then decide, all right, now it's time for me to change up and go? Well, what you worry about in these trucks is, man, if you don't make it, you get side by side with somebody, you just you, you stop. It's almost like you put the brakes on. So you definitely got to time it just right to be able to make the pass. Wendy, what's going on with Dennis? Well, Rick, a little bit of luck on the 46 truck, and that can always come into play when you're having a victory on your hands. They had a tear-off cover up the radiator earlier in the race, and they were trying to communicate with other teams about trying to work that tear-off off the radiator because the temperatures were getting hot on the 46. So luckily, the caution came out, the tear-off had come off, and things worked out for the 46. Now, Dennis hasn't run very well here at Michigan. He's run all five times, and he only has one top five. Ray, what do you have to add on the 46? Oh, crash on the back stretch, Wendy. A big pile Steve up back Park. there, and Steve Park is involved. So is Bobby Labonte in the 47, and now Truck's coming into the picture. And, oh, my goodness, very close. Steve Park. Park contact, Park. Steve Park stops now on the back stretch. I can see it looks like he got loose when you got underneath him and cut down on you. I mean, no, I know it wasn't intentional. I think he just got loose and got you. See Bobby Labonte right there, the 47 truck. Now, Steve Park, remember, he came in about 12 laps ago. See the window nets down. That's the sign we're looking for. You can see him taking his steering wheel off. But he restarted back in 26th. 11 laps ago, and he had moved up to ninth for those four fresh tires. So he definitely was on the move. Bobby Labonte out of his truck as well. Six truck went by. He got damaged too. I don't know how much, but what, he's dragging some stuff. Let's Ron take, a, day. take a look at how this happened. This is our seventh caution of the day. You got the six underneath the Todd Bodine in the 66. Up, up, up. Make a little contact. Hornaday day gets a little bit loose. And bam. Just he gets barely. Clips enough. Steve Park. Round Steve goes. Here comes Bobby Labonte. Nowhere to go just that quickly wadded up three good trucks and Steve Park in the 62 was absolutely just a victim he had a fast truck he was much faster than anyone here he was racing with just a few more inches and he'd have been all right and he gets turned hard Larry that's a really tough snap around right there fortunately for him and hit the front, right the left front left rear not so much into the driver's door. This is what was scary right here. You can see David Starr in the 75 just watch, getting by. See Todd Bodine, this car, this truck's all bowed down on the right front there. There goes a piece of something out of one of the trucks. Steve Park is holding his breath, hoping he can slide by here, but he doesn't quite make it. I'd like to back that up and watch that again because Todd Bodine's truck was really low on the right front, but then something flew out of it, looked like the sixth truck. Delana Harvick, the owner of the six truck. Misfortunes have been catching up with Ron Hornaday the last few races. He was able to claim victory earlier this season, but with pit problems, and now this making his way to pit road. But with all that said, he still came in here fourth in the points, only 66 points out of the lead. Let's, let's look at this one more time. Larry, help me here. Watch this 66 on the outside. Todd Bodine, look how low the right front is on his truck. Looks like the air dam's almost dragging the ground. Now watch right here. 
See that something something flew, flew out of there. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was, but you're right. And, and now Todd Bodine's valence is not down on the ground. Well, it was rolled over, wasn't it? I mean, you think he may have been on jumped on the brakes or something right there? I can't tell. It just is odd how far down on the ground it was. It's like he almost had a flat right front that's for a, a moment. That's what I first thought. He had a flat right front. Seventh caution of the day comes out. The hood is up on the six of Ron Hornaday. We'll have a single file restart when we come back. Look at the premier division of NASCAR in our next Hell Cup update. Point standings. Jimmy Johnson out in front. Carl Edwards moves up to fourth in the point standings after his win in Pocono. In the top ten make it into the chase as well as the driver who is within 400 points of the leader. Tomorrow on Fox, Ryan Newman will lead the field to the green flag at 1.30 as you boys will be calling a uh, Nextel Cup race. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, Sunday afternoon, the rocket man on the pole. 26 cars broke the track record. Ryan Newman over 194 miles an hour. They're going fast. A great crowd on hand for the trucks. We'll be back for the finish after this. Welcome back to Brooklyn, Michigan and the Michigan International Speedway for the Paramount Health Insurance 200 on Speed Channel. Four laps of racing remain. We're under caution number seven. And let's go down to Ray Dunlap. Well, Rick, right before that big wreck happened, I was about to add just a little bit about the 46 and Dennis Setzer's team. His crew chief is Eric Phillips. And, of course, they've worked together a good bit here trying to refine things. But realize he was the guy that took Travis Quapple to victory lane here a year ago in that Toyota. And I asked Eric before the race started today, I said, how similar are your notes from the Toyota to a Chevy? He said, you'd be surprised. The springs and shock setup that we have on this truck today match exactly what we used a year ago. Wendy? There was hardly any chance that the one truck was going to get around the 46, according to the radio communication, because the right front tire was getting too hot and the truck was starting to push. So that caution has proved beneficial for Ted Musgrave. He's had time to cool down that right front tire. They're talking about strategy and how he's going to get around the 46. When you look at the stats of Ted Musgrave at Michigan, the last two years he's run here, he's finished second. So I'm sure Ted Musgrave's a little bit more determined to get his first victory at Michigan. Ted Musgrave very determined, but another driver who's extremely determined to put his name into the record books would be the 15 of Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch has an opportunity to join the likes of Greg Biffle, Mike Skinner, and Ron Hornaday. Those drivers have won three races in a row. Kyle Busch won Charlotte. He also won Dover. And remember, this is just his 10th start in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, and he could add his name to a very illustrious group. Yes, he could, and we're on one to go. And all I can say for Dennis Sesser is he better get gone. Well, Kyle Busch will well, that's restart. Well, exactly right. Kyle Busch and these guys behind him, they're going to try to go. Busch is going to try to get by Harvey. And that's going to pull them up alongside of the one truck of uh, Musgrave. When they get side by side, the 46 should be long gone. We know Kevin Harvick in the 92 has been pretty good on short runs. And this is going to be about as short as it gets right here. It's going to be a two-lap shootout. But when I look back there in fifth place, Mike Skinner in that five, the Toyota, the only Toyota right now in about the top seven, I know how bad he wants to win a race. Got to have a great restart. Don't mess up. Don't leave the outside open. Especially because you've got a guy like Bobby Hamilton behind you. That's right. Protect the outside coming to get the green. Now, when you get down here to turn one, I'd be watching for Bobby on my right. Because he will be getting wound up up at the high side. Because quite honestly, it seems like his truck is better on the short run, Bobby Hamilton. It seems like it fades a little on the long run. This could play right into his hands. There, you talked about how important this restart. A lot of these trucks have a lot of laps on their tires, a lot of cycles. And you can spin those tires on a restart. Ron Hornaday back out onto the track. He's being shown in 30th position. NASCAR's trying to get him to run down on the bottom of the track. Yeah, there was fluid on the uh, pit lane there uh, when he came uh, in his pit stall, so it may be leaking something. 
three laps of racing to go. Randy Kaiser is going to take the pace truck down pit road. It's all in Dennis Setzer's hands. Three laps of racing away from victory number one in 2005. And Musgrave got a good restart here. He's got a run on Setzer as they head to turn one. He lagged back just a little bit before the start finish line. He timed it just right. Can he make the pass? He's looking. He's looking. Two drivers looking on the inside of the track. Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch. And still coming out of the wad of Ted Musgrave. Musgrave looks as though he blows a motor. He does. And he got oil all over Kevin Harvick's windshield. And Harvick can't see. No caution yet. Harvick is having trouble seeing, I, can't, I guarantee you. Caution flag not coming out. The flagman's grabbed the white flag, and so he wants to let everyone know that there's one lap of racing to go as Musgrave brings the number one Dodge on the inside of the track, and Dennis Setzer will take the white flag. And just as we anticipated, Bobby Hamilton, the 04, went to the high side. And as soon as the white flag came out, the yellow flag came after it, meaning Dennis Setzer will win the Paramount Health Insurance 200. There will not be a green-white checkered after the white flag has been displayed. You got to make about another half a lap under caution. NASCAR has let us know Dennis Setzer took the white flag and then the caution flag came out, and so it will be Dennis Setzer claiming his first win in 2005. Remember, the minute that caution was displayed, the field was frozen. They came across right there, Setzer, Kyle Busch, Bobby Hamilton, Kevin Harvick, and Mike Skinner. Bobby Labonte being his teammate this weekend, yeah, I think has been a big run. plus for that team because Bobby and Tony both in the cup cars qualified very well. Transfer some of that information over to this guy. He wins the race. And with more from the team of the 46, Wendy, I think you're standing by Lacrucci. It was one year ago that Toyota got his first victory with Travis Quabble, and on the pit box that day was Eric Phillips. Now Chevy has their first big victory at Michigan. Eric, you must be a pro when it comes to this track. Uh, uh, it's the first place I ever got to sit on the box with Joe, I don't know, four or five years ago. We struggled a little bit, and I was determined to come up here last year and run good with Travis, and uh, we did. Won it, uh, about the same setup and everything as, as we had in that thing last year, so that must work pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with these guys. Uh, that Chevy Z71 Silverado run great today. Congratulations to you and the team. Eric Phillips definitely has this place figured out. Well, I'm glad Wendy talked to him because, Daryl, I know Bobby Labonte added to this program, but I think Eric Phillips bringing that setup like Ray talked about a few laps ago, I think that was a big key. Oh, I think you're exactly right. I didn't realize that he was Travis's crew chief last year. That's probably the, the formula for success. Chevy congratulates Dennis Setzer and the number 46 Chevy Silverado on today's big win. No truck has dominated the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series like the Chevy Silverado. Chevy, the winningest name in racing in American Revolution. How about Ted Musgrave? Well, it, it would his truck to me he might have been out of gas. Well, we saw the smoke come out of the one. Oh, so that's right. No, that's right. He blew, blew the motor in. And I tell you what, you don't see a driver pushing his truck very often. Oh, why do you say that? Well, <laughs> drivers work hard. I, I agree they do. Yeah. But when they blow up, normally they walk oh, on. They'll push them. They'll, wipe, they'll wax them. They'll do whatever they got to do. I'm not sure about this driver working hard, Neil. Man. I'm Dennis Setzer. Come to work at noon. Coming sometime. in front of the grandstand. About. Our most recent victor in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. To the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series post-race show is presented by Craftsman. Let's go down to Victory Lane and Windy. It's been 27 races since Dennis Setzer's last victory. It came last year at Texas as his crew douses him with Gatorade. His 13th career win. Morgan Dollar Motorsports has been to Victory Lane once this season. That was with Bobby Labonte in Martinsville. Now Dennis Setzer has graced Victory Lane the first time in 2005. It's pretty exciting. Did you ever expect it today at Michigan? Well, we knew we had a really good truck. Our Z71 Silverado was awesome during practice yesterday. It was so fast through the corners all day, and then our RCR motor just carried it down the straightaway. So we had a good package today. Proud of Eric and all the guys. You know, these guys just hit so hard all week at the all week at the shop, practicing their stops and stuff. I can't tell how far this Morgan Dollar Motorsports team's come. 
Did you have problems with tires? We were looking at cords on a lot of the tires on pit road. Was it an ever an issue with you today? I don't think so. Eric never said anything. This thing was just so fast through the center of the corner. You just had to pick the right spot. You could run wide open just about all day. Just pretty awesome show by this piece. Good job to you today and crew chief Eric Phillips, who brings home another victory from Michigan. Let's check in with Ray with Kyle Busch. Well, thank you, Wendy, and a great job, second place, but uh, I'm just wondering what did you have for those guys? Were you thinking you had a shot at the victory? Yeah, we definitely had a shot at the victory. You know, this Chevy Silverado was awesome with Ditech.com on the side. Really want to thank Billy Ballou and uh, Richie Waters, all these guys again. You know, they give me awesome equipment every time I come out here. It's a blast to drive these things, but uh, had a flat tire there in the beginning part of the race. You know, the right rear went down on us. We corded it or something, but uh, still we were able to come back from that, but... Man, I wish they didn't throw the caution there. I think we really would have had something for them. I'm sure the fans would have loved to have seen another green-white checker finish because, uh, like we were, we were just talking, I think that was not official a green-white checker finish. So uh, it still would have been cool to go after the 46 truck. It's Congratulations to those guys, though. They had a good truck all day long. They stayed up front, so they deserve it. Now, Martin Truex will be in this truck when we go to Milwaukee. What's uh, your schedule? Do you know if you're back in or what you're going to be doing? <laughs> I'm not quite sure on that yet. I might, have, uh, I might have something up my sleeve for IRP for somebody else to drive. But um, after that, you know, maybe Bristol, Loudoun, Michigan, or uh, not Michigan, but uh, Richmond, we'll see. Okay. Well, it's sure been fun watching you. First, first and second for Kyle Busch. Impressive performance out of that 20-year-old. Yeah, and it's his dad giving him in. Uh, Richie Waters there. All right, talk about how much fun it is to race Tell you what, though. My look at Dennis Setzer right there in the 46 truck came in here fifth in points with three of the other top five having problems today. Big jump in the points for him. Fifth time that Dennis Setzer has finished in the top ten in his six Michigan starts. Speed Channel's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series post-race show is brought to you by Craftsman. Celebrating ten years tough of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Take a look at the unofficial results for race number 10 for the truck series. Again, Dennis Setzer sitting in victory lane. Kyle Busch with a very impressive three-race performance, first, first, and second. And the reason that these are unofficial, remember we talked about the moment that caution came out with one to go, the field is frozen. Now, unless it's for the finish of the race, they go back to the scoring loop. But when it dictates who finishes where, they go back to video, snapshots, whatever, to determine who finished where in this race. Yeah, I think the controversy or the dispute is about seventh down to about uh, 13th. There was a lot of uh, action right in there. Hard licks for Steve Park, Bobby Labonte, Ricky Craven, Brandon Witt. Four top ten point standings, Bobby Labonte, or Bobby Hamilton. Up on top, Dennis Setzer is tied in the point standings. Ted Musgrave drops to third. Look at that. Tied, 19-51. I mean, you got five guys right there. Really, <laughs> really, the top seven are, are just a blanket on all of them. But I talked that about just a second ago. Dennis Setzer comes in here fifth in points. He leaves here tied for the lead with Bobby Hamilton. Well, today's Mobile One Move of the Race is brought to you by the new Mobile One Extended Performance Official Motor Oil of NASCAR. And you see Bobby Hamilton up high, Ted Musgrave making the move, but it was the 46 of Dennis Setzer making the hard charge to the front and never relinquishing the top spot. Currently standing by with Kevin Harvick, who finished third, is Ray Dunlap. Well, Rick, I wanted to show you the view out of Kevin Harvick's window. Daryl made a good point. As Musgrave's car went up in smoke, Harvick didn't see much, and I saw your truck go way up the racetrack whenever that happened. Yeah, it, uh, it definitely went straight up the track and uh, oiled it down. But, um, you know, this GM Gooder and Chevy Silverado was uh, a lot of fun to drive today, and I told uh, Bobby Hamilton and Skinner, I said, I know why you guys get out of these things smiling every week, because it's a heck of a time. So. Uh, can't wait to come back and do it again. Uh, thought we were in the right spot there, coming to the white. Knew we didn't need to be leading, but it was still a good day for Chevrolet. And we'll see you again at Richmond. Kevin Harvick will be back, and he'll be driving the number 47 truck that day, as Tony Stewart will be behind the wheel of this one of Kevin Harvick. Our reigning champ, Bobby Hamilton, 
He's still looking for a full-time sponsor. You can actually see there's a cue card right behind us that Lori's holding up for you, Bobby. Now, Bobby, you're still not sure if you finished fourth. You think you got by Harvick when that caution flag flew. Yeah, but, I mean, they, the loops will tell the story. I'm not going to second-guess it. I just ask them to look at it, and, and they always do because they want to stay fair with the system, too. So, uh, you're talking about the cue card. I mean, we got a different sponsor every week. So, Monroe Dodge Superstores from here in Michigan, and all them guys are here. Uh, they, I'm sure they had a great time, went over to their house and had a party. Mac Bailey. Got your driver's suit on. Here with Dodge and Detroit, love your Pro Series. Clifty Farms. If you've never had any Clifty Farm country ham, you need to do it. And also, you've been to the ride along, my ride along. Yes. You rode with yes, me I in have. trucks. You drove them. So we start a new fan club. Everybody needs to go to the website and look. And it's got some cool stuff in it about the ride along. So, but I mean, I'm real proud of my guys. We've had a terrible last two or three weeks. This is a good point stay for us. I hate to see, see Ted have a bad day because he's a fellow competitor Dodge driver, but good day. All right, Bobby Hamilton's little commercial there. Bobby Hamilton, great points day for him. And if you notice, he was kind of running mid-pack all day, so a great run, whether he finished third or fourth today, Ray. Well, Wendy, we saw Mike Skinner's Toyota Tundra up, on, up front all day, and I got to believe you're just happy to get a finish finally, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, our primary truck yesterday, we had some, some problems, and uh, I don't know if a shock broke or we ran over something, but the right front tire blew, and terrible wreck. I'm pretty stiff today, and... It's been a big weekend. We got our uh, Automaniac car in the in the in the Cup race for tomorrow, so uh, I got to rest up tonight so I can so I can try to do those guys a good job. But uh, do you learn anything here from this race that can help you for tomorrow, Mike? Yeah, it's you know it, we're pretty camber sensitive and and uh, just really have to take care of the tires. If your car's handling real real good, like my Tundra was today, and you run it hard hard hard, normally if they're sticking good, they're not wearing the tires out. But if you're sticking good here and you're running really really hard. I think uh, you got to be real careful with the cameras and stuff because it's wearing the tires pretty good. But uh, our truck was really, really good today. We just came up short. It's a backup truck and uh, qualified pretty good with it and had a pretty good day. But uh, I just want to thank Bill Davis and the Toyota folks and everybody, you know, Vavilene, everybody that, that helps on that thing. And uh, I just really, really got a good okay, relationship. We're running out of time. We got to run. Sorry. Good luck tomorrow. Bye. It's so out in front to start this race. Kyle Busch was looking to claim his third victory in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series in a row. But it was a lot of bumping and banging and sliding as we saw seven different cautions slow us down and slow even Batman down in the 99. But it ended up Dennis Setzer taking the top spot. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.